so the reason why OCP doesn't use splinters is that is that splinters do take up a lot of bidding space and OCP has a better method but unless you're going to use asking bids it's not one that you can really transplant to for example um, two over one or standard American uh, the advantage is that we get to start our slam exploration at the two level rather than the four level um, so we have a lot more bidding space available for slam exploration that's why we don't OCP doesn't use splint as much so I'm not going to, to go into what we do instead of splinters now splinters are um, a valuable addition to any bidding system even if you don't have other methods available uh, like I said OCP doesn't tend to use it itself but uh, it's a really useful thing to have available for two over one or standard American or ACOL um, as well as delayed game raises it's a good way of showing an immediate interest in slam I don't see why not Sonia I, I mean it's not forcing it's not forcing opener to bid to slam it's simply showing interest in a slam potentially um, I, I've never put a set limit on it um, I think in the past I've splintered on as little as 14 um, I think 16 plus is fine if you want to make it stronger so be it but uh, you're going to lose a lot of opportunities to do it if you if you specify that um, the whole point about a, a splinter is that it's game forcing agreeing the major an invitational immediately invitational to slam there's nothing to stop you're never going past the four level of openers major if you splinter so you're not forcing them to bid past game and if they have a rock bottom minimum hand and they're just not interested they can just sign off in four of their major and if you've only got a 16 count but Sanya um, I, I think why would you not use it if you want to explore slam if you don't have other methods available ah, okay if you want to go slower that's fine I, I'm not saying you have to use a splinter I'm just saying it shows a particular kind of hand with really good trump support a shortage in the suit bid and good controls that's what a splinter shows and and it is slam invitational it's not forcing to slam though and if openers got a minimum and they're just not interested unless you're really strong they can just sign off in four of their major and that carries a message or maybe they've got lots of wasted values in your shortage in your short suit okay like I said if 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 your style for using splinters is between you and your partner I'm not saying you have to play it the way that I've just outlined that's the way that OCP tends to have splinters available but like I said in practice we hardly ever use them because they waste a lot of space
again, you you have to decide um, what what you want your style to be with splinters. Um, you know, there are all sorts of permutations and combinations. But uh, the advantage of the soup below method is that, uh, especially if you're going to use something like one spade, three no trumps to show a club shortage, uh, is that you now have a very cheap um, bid for Roman key card Blackwood or beta if you're going to use asking bids in the short suit. So one spade, three no chump showing a club shortage, a club splinter. Now four clubs could be Roman key card Blackwood or it could be the beta uh, control ask. Um, rather than having to start off it, start it off at four no trumps, you could start it off lower than that. Um, So OCP itself never uses Roman keycard Blackwood, ever. In practice over one heart and one spade there's only ever one that you're going to use um, normally because as I said we don't use splinters splinters is the only time when you might use the strong beta scale I'll just give you an example um, just bear with me So just take this hand, Sal's got a reasonable 12 count, so they open one heart. Um, so this is using the suit below method. So this is still a double jump shift over one heart, which is the definition of a splinter. It doesn't have to be at the four level if it's in a higher ranking suit. Um, so three spades shows a shortage in the suit above spades, which is clubs, agrees hearts and is immediately slam invitational. So if you were using beta, this would now be using a, asking about controls. If you were going to use Roman keycard Blackwood, then four clubs could be Roman keycard Blackwood. Um, you could even play this as uh, 
just to void wood as well. Because North has shown a strong hand with, with good controls, we use the strong beta scale here, where the first step is 0 to 4 controls, second step is 5 controls, and so on. So this is just a natural invitation over four hearts. Um, so this is now definitely showing a void in clubs, which means that uh, North's five controls absolutely have to be in the other three suits. So now South can be fairly certain that North has the Ace of Spades, the Ace of Diamonds and the King of Hearts. Anyway, that's just a, a little thing just to show you how the, the suit below method can save you some space. Like I said, don't worry about the details of... It depends on what methods you're going to use, Sanya. Um, if you're going to play one spade, four hearts as a club shortage, um, he could either, if you're using Roman key card Blackwood, you could bid four no trumps because it's a little bit cheaper than five clubs in that instance. Um, or you could start Q bidding. Or he can sign off in four spades if he's not interested. Like I said, it all depends in, entirely on what your other methods are. You know, if, if if the club shortage has really improved his hand, you know, if he's got something like three or four small clubs, that's absolutely perfect. Um, so, you know, if you've got Roman key card Blackwood in use rather than asking bids, you would probably bid four no trumps over four hearts. Um, if you're going to use asking bids... Uh, then you would probably use you would probably bid five clubs, or you might bid four no trumps as an invitation to Q bid. Q bidding is much underrated because um, you tend to find out more precisely where uh, where partner has their controls. A lot of the time, I would rather if I if I'm not using asking bids, I would rather Q bid my way to a slam than. Uh, start mucking about with Roman key card. The thing is, is that he's, he's shown five controls, Sanya. Uh, sorry. Um, Walid. He's shown, North has shown five controls in this sequence. So that's an ace and three kings, or two aces and a king. Okay, that's the only way you can add up to five controls. 
since North has has shown a club void with six clubs, their five controls pretty much have to be the Ace of Diamonds, the Ace of Spades, and the King of Hearts. And and plus they're showing ostensibly sixteen plus, so they must have some other stuff, some queens and jacks as well as as those. Two aces and a king is eleven points. So to get up to to fifteen or sixteen, you know, they need to have a bit more than that. So they're gonna have things like the Queen of Diamonds or the Queen of Spades or whatever. They can only have four points in hearts. So they pretty much have to have at least, at least 10 in diamonds and spades. Because they can't have anything in clubs. Okay? Right. So, so... I don't think, I don't think they would, they would bid six clubs with a stiff ace of clubs because it's not really adding anything to what they've already shown the whole point about the six club bid over five hearts is that it's in addition to the five controls that they've already shown not part of that five controls north might bid six hearts with a stiff ace of clubs but they wouldn't bid six clubs. That's the whole point. Six clubs is is looking for seven hearts here. Six clubs is a very strong bid over five hearts because we're committed to slam anyway. And so therefore six clubs is looking for seven hearts. That's why I think South can be fairly certain that A, six clubs is a void and B, that North has the controls that he does have. I don't think uh, North would be bidding like this if they just had, say, Jack-10 to four hearts. Because they're relying on uh, South having, you know, too much in hearts to be looking for a slam. So six clubs effectively is a grand slam force. Okay. All right, Sanya, you understand? Okay. Let's move on. Okay, so a lot of systems and a lot of pairs will play a jump shift over um, one heart or one spade as game forcing um, uh, and, and basically strong, 16, 18 plus. Um, to my mind, uh, and, and a lot of expert pairs, um, that's a complete waste of a bid because uh, there are other ways of, of forcing to gain if you've got a strong hand. So in OCP uh, we do use jump shifts as 16 plus over one diamond, one no trump, and two club openings, but we don't use it over one heart and one spade. Um, because we have this much cheaper way of exploring for slam when we when responder has trump support and 16 plus.
Okay. Uh, weak jump shifts, as a, as distinct from fit showing jump shifts, weak jump shifts, I find totally inexplicable. I, I've never seen any sense behind these. If you've got a misfit with partner, the last thing you want to do is to effectively start trying to preempt them by jumping in a weak bid you have yourself. You know, one spade, three diamonds to show no support for spade, but a weak hand with long diamonds. That's insane to my to my mind. Um, if you've got a misfit with partner, you're more likely to pass or go slow, depending on your strength. You know, if you've got a complete misfit with partner for partner suit, there's a good chance that they probably have a misfit for your suit. So jumping levels of bidding just to show that is is crazy. Okay, so if you're not going to play a jump shift over one heart and one spade as strong, and you're not going to play it as fundamentally weak, what are you going to do? And these are the two most common methods. It's either mini splinters, which is um, a mild invitation, but showing good trump support and a side suit singleton or void and something in the region OCP uses mini splinters in the region of eight to nine high card points but what you have to bear in mind is that with OCP opener is limited to a maximum of 15 high card points for their one heart and one spade bid If you're playing two over one or standard American, that top limit is quite a lot higher. So you could potentially play your fit showing jump shifts as slightly weaker than that. You might play it as seven to eight or seven to nine. Um, because there's, there's more of a chance that partner will have significantly more than an 11 count. But the fact is, you know, you're promising good trump support and shape. Um, so you're unlikely to to come unstuck, even if partner is minimum. The other one is a fit showing jump shift, which is the same sort of strength hand uh, in OCP. It's about eight to nine points. But showing good trumps, not perhaps necessarily as good trumps as a mini splinter would have. But good, decent trump support and a reasonable side suit that, that might be a source of tricks. So you might have something like, you know, jack to three or jack to four in, in opener's trump suit. And something like ace, queen, jack, xx in a side suit. So essentially a mini splinter is a bit like an immediate short suit trial bid in openers major and a fit showing jump shift is a bit like an immediate long suit trial bid for openers major that's basically the idea but you're you're perhaps slightly weaker than you would be um, if you were going to make that kind of a trial bid. Mainly because it's opener's suit that you're talking about rather than yours. Any questions so far?
Okay, so so normally you have to decide whether you're going to use mini splinters or whether you're going to use fit showing jump shift. And using normal methods, you have to pick one or the other. You can't play both because you're using essentially the same bids, potentially. So using normal methods, you could either play one spade, three clubs as showing a mini splinter in clubs, agreeing spades, or you could play one spade, three clubs as being a fit showing jump shift with a club suit and spade support. Well, you just have to bear with me, Wally, because OCP uses a subtly different method, um, which allows you to use both mini splinters and fit showing jump shifts at the same time. So you get to choose which of the two if any, you're going to use on a given hand. Um, and, and we use it in, we use, it's, it's the mini splinters that change things. So just bear with me and I will cover that. Okay, so the sequences are slightly different for over a, over a one heart opening than over a one spade opening. Um, so let's let's look at mini splinters first. So in OCP. Um, it's a little bit like what Walid said. So over one spade, two no trumps is showing an unspecified mini splinter. So we're not saying which suit our shortage is in immediately. But over one heart, we don't use two no trumps to show that. We use two spades. So in OCP, one spade, two no trumps and one heart, two spades both show a mini splinter in an unspecified suit. So it's this is a little bit like an immediate request to make a short suit trial bid. So we're not actually making the trial bid, we're just showing that we've got that kind of a hand and asking permission, if you like, to show where our shortage is. So if open has got a maximum with good controls, they're probably just going to bid gain. They're not going to allow you to show where your shortage is. They're just going to go straight to four of their major. And if they're minimum with absolutely no interest in proceeding further, they can just sign off in three of their major. Again, without allowing you to show where your shortage is. So if open is mid-range and they're not sure, or if the location of your shortage is absolutely critical to whether they want to play in game or not then open a relays in the next bid up over one spade two no trumps or one heart two spades and that says okay go on show me where your shortage is and with ocp now we show the short suit by bidding the suit below and like I said, the reason why we do this is for consistency with the whole system. It's not particularly because we gain any particular advantage by using the suit below method in these sequences. But as you'll see, because you need the response or the rebid by responder not to go past three of the major, you always end up potentially not actually bidding the suit itself. So if you if you weren't going to use the suit below method and it goes one spade, two no trumps, I've got a mini splinter, three clubs, okay, where is it? You've only got three bids available, three diamonds, three hearts and three spades to show where your shortage is. So if you weren't using the suit below method, 
three diamonds would show a diamond shortage, three hearts would show a heart shortage, and three spades would show a club shortage. And you have to do that. It's no good, it's no good responder bidding four clubs over three clubs to show a club shortage because now he's effectively forced us to game anyway. Using the suit below method, um, it's similar, but it's the suit below. So three diamonds over three clubs would show a heart shortage. Three hearts shows a club shortage and three spades shows a diamond shortage. And once you get your headway around the way this wheel works, going around the suits, you just work it out from the cheapest response. So three diamonds is, is showing a heart shortage. And everything else follows on from that. Three hearts is the next suit up, which is clubs, and three spades, which be showing a diamond shortage. But like I said, there's no there's no real advantage with mini splinters, because you're never going to start ace asking. Um, certainly with OCP, where where openers limited to 15. It's either a matter of playing in a part score or playing in game. Opposite eight to nine in responder's hand, you're never going to be thinking in terms of slam. So the whole point about mini splinters and, and the same thing you'll see when we get to fit showing jump shifts. It's about, mini splinters is about reaching sub-minimum hands where even though we haven't got the points for game, we can make game because we've got a good fit between the two hands. It's identifying the hands where we've got that excellent fit that allows us to, to make 10 tricks in our agreed major despite the fact that we've only got maybe 23, 22 points between the two hands. That's where, that's where these really gain. And I said at the start that, uh, that it's a much, this is a much better usage of your space. If you've got a, you know, a 17 count with good four card support for open major. You can always find some way of bidding it so that you force to gain. Um, you know, if you're playing two over one, you just bid two clubs and the whole thing's immediately game forcing. You may have absolutely no intention of, of playing in clubs, but if you bid two clubs and partner bids something else and you now bid four spades, you know, you've got to gain. You don't need to. To, to waste the space initially. If you bid two clubs, partner bid something else, you can even bid two spades and it's still game forcing. So um, using, using these jump shifts as um, mini splinters or fit showing, A, you get to make that kind of a bid much more often because you pick up eight to nine point hands much more frequently than you do 16, 17 count hands. But also you gain hand over fist in terms of the amount of imps that you get. Because if you've got a 17 count, everybody's going to be getting to gain. But a lot of people will be stopping at a part score because they won't have the methods to identify that superb fit between the two hands. And so this, this kind of a bid will gain you more imps than using it as a, a strong game forcing bid. Okay, so if you use a mini splinter or a fit showing jump shift, opener is 100% the captain of the hand. So if opener declines the invitation and signs off in three of their major, whether they ask for the shortage, location of the shortage first or not, you, you as responder must accept that decision. It's a bit like making a trial bid, partner signs off in three of their major and you decide, well, I'm going to bid four anyway. 
what's the point in that? If you were going to bid four anyway, don't ask the question by making the trial bid. If you were going to go to four anyway, just bid four. So one spade, two spades, four spades. Over one spade, two spades, don't bid three clubs to ask partner a question as to, you know, whether they want to play in four or not. And when they bid three spades, you sign off in four. If they sign off in three, just abide by their decision. There is one time when you might do that, which is when three clubs would actually be an advanced cue bid. Um, potentially looking for slam if partner was um, sort of had two and a half of your major rather than just two. Uh, it's permissible in those cases because it'll become abundantly clear uh, once the hand finishes why you've bid three clubs. But don't bid three clubs with an invitational hand and then just override partner's decision. That, that destroys partnerships. OK, so OCP uses a guideline of about eight to nine high card points for a mini splinter. Um, if you want to vary that, that's fine. But even with OCP, that eight to nine points is not set in concrete. Um, just like you'll see, you know, north in the hand that's displayed here, splintered with a 14 count. But it's a very nice 14 count. Um, so we're, we tend to go more off how much you like the hand. But the whole point about the mini splinters is that it's it's a it's a mild invitation to game trying to get to game definitely wanting to be in game if if probably if open is maximum but perhaps trying to reach game if they're not maximum but they're fit with your hand is very good so if you're showing a shortage in clubs you want them to have something like three or four small clubs or maybe something like ace to four you don't want them to have king jack to four because that's largely wasted opposite a singleton and definitely opposite a void so that isn't a good fit so something like ace to three or ace to four is perfect um three or four small is even better because now you've got absolutely no wasted values and no chance of any wasted values in that suit so you're playing with a 30 point deck So imagine that you've got queen to five spades, a void heart, king queen to five diamonds and three small clubs. Partners opens one spade. Um, some people might bid four spades. And uh, if I didn't have many splinters available, I might well bid four spades. Um, but certainly with OCP, that certainly qualifies for a preemptive three spades. Um, but the mini splinter is actually more constructive. So if you bid two no trumps over one spade, partner immediately knows you've got a, a shortage somewhere. If they're maximum, they're going to bid four spades. If they're minimum, they'll probably bid three. And if they're somewhere in the middle or if they've got the sort of hand where actually they might be interested, but it really does depend on where your singleton or, or void is. So over two no trumps, they might bid three clubs. Now you would bid three diamonds showing a heart shortage. And then partner can decide. And if they bid three spades, you pass. If they bid four spades, that's fine. But note that three diamonds is not showing a diamond suit. It's showing a heart shortage. If you weren't going to play the suit below method, then you would simply bid three hearts over three clubs. OK, I'll just go into this business of the wheel, the suit wheel, um, quickly. So 
So if you imagine that spades is going to be the agreed suit, then your your trump wheel, your your suit wheel, ignores spades and it ignores no trumps. So basically, your your trump wheel is going clubs, diamonds, hearts, clubs, diamonds, hearts, clubs, diamonds, hearts. So over one spade, two no trumps, three clubs, which is showing show me your shortage. Three diamonds is going to show a heart shortage if you're playing the suit below. Three hearts shows a club shortage, which is the next suit up above hearts, ignoring spades and no trumps. And three spades is showing a diamond shortage. And that way you can get all three suits in below or at the level of three spades. So opener knows where your shortage is, but can still either stop in three spades or bid four depending on whether they want to be there. So if hearts is the agreed suit, again, your, your suit wheel is clubs, diamonds and spades. So over two no trumps, three clubs show a diamond shortage, three diamonds a spade shortage and three hearts shows a club shortage. But the trick is always to, to think about what the cheapest possible suit is going to show, i.e. three clubs showing a diamond shortage, and you can work up from there. Okay, you'll see this in a minute when we come to fit showing jump shifts. But the reason why we swap around the, the two spade and two no trump responses to one heart is that the mini splinter sequences need the extra space, but the fit showing jump shifts don't. Um, if we played one heart, two no trumps, um, three clubs would be asking where the shortage is. And now we've only got two bids three diamonds and three hearts to show the three short suits. So it doesn't work. So we need the extra space over hearts, which is why we use one no trump, sorry, one heart, two no trumps to show a fit showing jump shift in spades and one heart, two spades as the unidentified mini splinter. Um, we don't need to do that over one spade. So one spade, two no trumps is the mini splinter, and one heart, two spades is the mini splinter. I will show you a couple of examples. I'll just show you one. Okay, so here um, 
West showed the unidentified mini splinter with two spades. East is mid range. And yes, it does slightly matter. It's a diamond shortage in the West hand is absolutely no use to them. Um, ideally, they want it in clubs, but potentially even in spades, it's not wasting too much of their values. So two no trumps from East says, where's your mini splinter? Three hearts shows the club shortage because we're playing the suit below. And that's perfect. Absolutely. We've got no wasted values. Well, just a jack in clubs. Um, but it means basically we're going to lose a maximum of one club trick. But now West can rough the other clubs. And so their values are going to be in diamonds and spades and hearts, which is where we want them. Hopefully not too much in diamonds. And so four hearts by east. And so, you know, we've reached a, a 22 point game, which is going to fly home um, as the cards lie. But we've done it in a more scientific way of, of establishing it. Yes, some people might just punt four hearts over one heart, but they don't really know whether four hearts is going to make. They're just taking a chance on it. Whereas we've asked the questions and worked out that actually the club shortage is really valuable. And uh, so we're getting to it for the right reasons, knowing that it's going to be a good place to play rather than just hoping. So in the long run, we all gain. And yes, you might say, oh, but you've missed a slam. OK. Um, yes, on a on a good day, you're going to have an absolutely perfect fit hand like this where you could potentially make 12 tricks. No, I don't think it is. Um, a, East doesn't know that it's a void rather than a singleton in the West hand. Um they don't they just don't know that it's a perfect fit hand you know west doesn't have to have the ace of diamonds they might have you know not the jack of spades and king queen to five diamonds and now you know you're struggling to make five never mind six and you just don't have uh, you know you you just don't have the ability to to diagnose this kind of a perfect fit. Yeah, you, know, you might as well ask, oh well, if North had the King of Spades, why you aren't bidding seven? You know, you can't afford to be in seven. But the you are never going to have a bidding system. No bidding system is going to get you to six hearts here, reliably. There's just too many unknowns about the West Hand from East's point of view. You know, they don't have to have the Ace of Diamonds. They don't have to have a Void Club. It might be a Singleton Club. So you might just make four on the nose. You might make five. They don't have to have the Queen of Hearts. Their values may be elsewhere. They're not necessarily showing four to an honour. On balance, you want to be in four rather than six. You know, the number of hands where you can make 12 tricks on this is going to be one hand in a hundred. So on that basis, it's not biddable. Sorry, Sonia, I disagree. Anybody who bids a Jacoby two no trumps on a on a nine count has has misunderstood. I think, you know, again, you can play obviously. Jacoby, however you want, 
but most people play it as a much better hand than West has here. Well, again, you're using methods that OCP doesn't use. We don't mechanically add four points to the void because you don't know you you don't know whether that void is going to be useful. East might have ace king of clubs. How useful is your club void now? Yeah. Um, you know, most people most people will play Jacoby as a lot stronger than this. Um, and not necessarily with as much shape. Again, if you play Jack a bit differently, that's fine. And, and however you and your partner play it, if it suits you, I, I'm not here to tell you that it's wrong. But uh, you're playing, I think you're playing Jack a bit differently than most people will play it. And I think using a mini splinter is much more useful. Okay? Anyway, um, like I said, if it works for you, you you play however you like. Um, but uh, again, you're going to get the hands for a mini splinter far more often than you will for a Jacoby Tuno Trumps kind of hand. Um, yeah, I've never liked Jacoby Tuno Trumps, as you might possibly have gathered. Uh, but uh, if it works for you, that's fine. Okay, if there's no more questions, we'll move on to fit showing jump shifts. Okay, so we we show a fit showing jump shift by by jump shifting in a suit. The only difference is that over one heart one heart, two spades is not a fit showing jump shift in spades. It's our mini splinter, which I've just covered. One heart, two no trumps is a fit showing jump shift in spades. And aside from that, it's exactly the same. So over one spade, three clubs, three diamonds and three hearts are all fit showing jump shifts. And over one heart, two no trumps, three clubs and three diamonds are all fit showing jump shifts. So again, these are showing about eight to nine points, roughly. Decent trump support. Doesn't have to be as good as four to an honor. Um, but about eight points. And a five card or longer side suit that's likely to be a source of trinks. So like I said, you're looking at something like, you know, ace, queen, jack to five. Not, you know, queen, nine to five. <laughs> Queen nine to five, you need partner to have a good fit for your suit before it becomes remotely valuable. Ace queen jack to five, they could have too small, and you could potentially be getting two or three tricks from the suit at least. Um, So the reason the reason why we we can afford to swap them round is that over fit showing jump shifts we don't need to have any complicated inquiry sequences because the whole question is being asked by the fit showing jump shift. It's saying I've got a side suit here, I've got trump support, I've got about eight to nine points, how about it? We don't need to ask any more. So we don't need the space over one heart, two no trumps. If we're playing that as the fit showing jump shift in spades. So this is a guideline. It, it definitely isn't a hard and fast rule. I've I've made fit showing jump shifts with a singleton as well as the suit. Um, there comes a point though where your hand is so good that you're better off just jumping to game in openers major. 
Um, so if you've got a fit showing jump shift and potentially you could have made a mini splinter as well, you could have done either, the chances are that possibly you ought to be thinking about just jumping to game in openers major rather than issuing an, an invitation. Um, again, there's no hard and fast rule though. So let's show you a, an example. So here, um, West has shown the fit showing jump shift in spades by bidding two no trumps, eight to nine points, decent spade suit, adequate heart support, don't have a shortage outside that. That's a really typical fit showing jump shift in spades. East in practice has six controls. Um, They've got a super fit for spades. Um, they've got good controls. And so they're, they're going to go straight to four heart. Um, in fact, any kind of an invitation from West and they'd probably go to four heart. But not only are they nearly maximum, but they've got six controls, three aces and the fit for spades so it's perfect So the two spade, the two no trump bid here is effectively like an immediate long suit trial bid in spades. Agreeing hearts. That's basically what it's like. Um, and again, it's as with the mini splinters, it's trying to get to a sub minimum. Uh, for heart contract if East has got a good fit with your spades. It doesn't have to be ace to three, even ace x would be good here. What you don't want in the East hand is something like a singleton in partner's spades. You want to have some some honour help. You don't really want three small either, although there are times when three small is going to be okay. But you don't want to have a shortage in partners um, fit showing bed. So, you know, it's possible um, maybe if East had ace to four spades here, they might bid four spades rather than four hearts and saying, listen, I've got a really good fit. I've got a better fit for your spades than you probably have for my heart. So let's play in spades. And if they were, if they had, say, an absolute minimum hand, but with four small spades, they might even pass. Well, not two no trumps, but they might bid three spades rather than three hearts and say I don't want to play in game but let's play in spades 
because there's too much of a chance of, of getting spade roughs by ops if you've got a you know a nine plus card fit in spades but you're absolutely minimum and you don't have the controls to to handle it so you might even decide to play in three you know if it went one spade three hearts you might conceivably even just decide to pass three hearts rather than converting back to three spades or you might even bid four hearts rather than four spades but most of the time openers going to return to their major either at the three level or the four level So again, the, the fit is the crucial thing, especially when they're mid-range. So that's the kind of game that we're trying to get to here. That's that's what fit showing jump shifts and mini splinters is trying to identify. Um, it's those 22, 23, 24 point games where a lot of people were going to be stopping in a part score. Um, but if you can get to game because you know that the fit between the two hands is really great this is this will gain you game swings in a team's match and it'll gain you a lot of a lot of match points or imps at pairs So if you're playing mini splinters and fit showing jump shift. No, it's spade quality. Any any fit showing jump shift, it's got to be a reasonably good suit. Like I said, you want something like ace queen jack or king queen jack or ace king to five. You don't want queen nine to five. Queen nine to five isn't any use unless, unless partner's got a really good fit for your suit. Okay, you know, if you've got something like queen nine to five, just bid it first and then support partners. So if you give if you give uh, West here, say, give them the ace of clubs and queen to five spades. OK. So they've still got something like a nine count. But now you just bid one spade. Partner might bid whatever. Depends on your agreements. Um, and now you're just going to support hearts at the two or three level. Depending on how you feel about it. Probably the two level. So you're just saying, I've got a spade suit, I've got some heart support. 
I'm round about eight to ten points. Or uh, if you're playing two over one, probably more like eight to nine. Okay, but not a fit showing jump shift. The fit showing jump shift is showing a better spade suit than queen to five. Okay, Wally. So it's 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 it, the suit quality is quite important for all of the fit showing jump shifts. The whole point about it is that because if you because you've got trump support as well, hopefully partner can draw trumps and then run your suit as a source of tricks. That's the point. You have no particular expectation of that when you've got queen nine to five. But if you've got king queen jack to five or ace queen jack to five or ace king to five, now you do have that kind of an expectation if partner has a reasonable fit for your suit. Thank you, Roger. Yes, John Lutz um, practice is being overseen by Roger this coming Sunday because John's not around. And Roger's has his own practice on Thursday evenings at 4 p.m. New York time. The one tomorrow night is 5 p.m. New York time. Do go along. Both of those practices have hands targeting. Oh, are you doing it at 4? 4 p.m. New York time tomorrow, Roger? Oh, right, okay, John's normally at 5 p.m. Okay, 4 p.m. New York time, uh, both Sunday and Thursday. Uh, do go along to those, because they're all hands that are going to be specifically on mini splinters, splinters, and fit showing jump shifts, so you can practice what I've been discussing with you tonight. I think if, if you, as I said actually earlier tonight, um, Sanya, if you've got a hand where you could bid either a mini splinter or a fit showing jump shift, you actually ought to be thinking about maybe just making a preemptive bid of four of openers major and actually hiding both of them but just going straight to game. Because you've got the shortage and the trump support and the side suit that might be a source of tricks, you ought to be thinking about that. But um, it's a little bit like whether to make a short suit trial bid or a long suit trial bid. If you could make either, I would tend to make the long suit trial bid, i.e. the fit showing jump shift, because it's perhaps easier for opener to to judge how good the fit is, especially if they have a shortage somewhere else and a fit for your major for your fit showing bid. Um, whereas if you just show the shortage, um, it may be more difficult for them to judge how good the fit is in the other two suits. Okay. So I, I would tend to show the fit showing jump shift rather than mini splinter. But if I could show both, I would be saying you ought to be at least thinking about actually doing neither and going to game in openers major. So if you have a really strong invitation to game, 
um, I would tend to make a two over one and then support openers major at the three level. Um, again, two over ones aren't forcing to game in OCP, uh, but they are forcing to two no trumps. So that's a really strong invitation to game. Don't forget, one spade, three spades, and one heart, three hearts are mostly preemptive. So they're perhaps hands that aren't quite good enough for a mini splinter or a fit showing jump shift. Um, but again, you decide with your partner how you want the nuances to work between these different ways of inviting. Don't forget with OCP, um, you can either go via the forcing no trump or you can make a preemptive bid or you've got the fit showing jump shifts or you've got the mini splinters. So you've got loads of different ways of making a, an invitation depending on how good an invitation it is and what sort of hand that you have. Okay, any questions? I do have a um, a few example hands that we can play around with. Um, Okay, can I have four victims or volunteers, please? Again, you don't have to be an expert in OCP um, or indeed in this subject to, uh, to sit, but I would rather that you'd actually sat through most of this session before you sit. Um, otherwise, you're not going to be fitting well with what partner's going to be doing. Two more, please. Come on, guys. Don't be shy. Thank you, Charlene. Any more for any more? Roger. Roger's already there. Come on, Phil. Have a seat. Sanya. Mehmet. Mehmet. Naomi says that Mehmet should sit. Mehmet's normally a bit shy. Come on, somebody. It's no fun for me to sit because I set the hands and I can see all, all 52 cards. Oh, Mehmet's going to be so... Well done. well done, that man. Okay. So again, in OCP, one heart's 11 to 15. Um, we will assume that we're using OCP. Since all four of the people here. Oh yeah, sorry, uh, Roger.
Okay, North South are with the program. Uh, claim your 10 tricks, please, guys. So this is exactly the kind of exactly the kind of game that we're trying to reach here. Um, we've only got 22 points between the two hands, but we've got that double fit in clubs and hearts. And uh, yes, there may be some times when, say, West has got the king of diamonds and east has got the ace king of spades and you may go off but when you look at the two north south hands and you know that east is on lead you really want to be in four here so there's no guarantees but it's a really good game to be in any questions well done guys Sorry, what never happens, Sanya? The thing is, Sanya, you know, if you, you have a really good chance of running five club tricks here, you need the clubs 3-3 three, three or the Jack Doubleton. Well, nothing's nothing's certain in this life, Sanya. Yes, it's possible that that North might have, sorry, that South might have, you know, two spades and three diamonds. In which case, you you could be off four tricks before you start. Possible. When you just, if you ignore the east-west hands and you look at the north-south hands, you actually feel, yes, I can probably make 10 tricks here with east on lead. Absolutely right, Roger. And this is at least 40%, I would say. On a spade lead, you're absolutely guaranteed barring a 6-1 spade split. Well, I'm not going to argue about 37 or 40. I want to be in I want to be in game on these cards. It might be different. It might be different if West was on lead. Now my chances of losing two diamonds and at least two spade tricks is much greater. Well, okay, Sonia, I, I'm, you know, I can't make you see it. Um, the fact is, you are making ten tricks on this hand. Absolutely for certain, as the cards lie. Thank you. At the end of the day, Sanya, you know, the system is there. I'm not saying you have to use it. On a given hand, you as responder decide what you want to bid. If you don't want to use a fit showing jump shift or a mini splinter and you'd rather just end up playing in two of the major making two over tricks, that's fine. You know, I can't, I can't force you to use the system.
the thing is also the thing is you see not only do the cards have to be in the right places for ops to take all those tricks but actually ops have to find the defense and it's not always clear cut that they will do sometimes in fact quite often it's the position that they could on perfect defense take say four or five tricks immediately but they don't and that's when the cards are unfavorable Mehmet is deep in thought. Don't forget, Mehmet, no asking bids yet. So you don't have the option of bidding one no trump here. Just imagine that you'd never heard of asking bids, except for beta. I think the system bid here, if you're not using asking bids, Mehmet, is four diamonds. Showing a splinter, showing a heart shortage, game forcing in spades, slam invitational. Okay. Okay, so we'll allow you beta here. We'll allow you four hearts as beta. So so four hearts is asking how many controls West has. And so four spades would show naught to four controls an ace being two and a king being one four no trumps would show five controls and five clubs shows six controls okay um Lead away, Roger. Okay. Um, claim 12 tricks. Well bid. I okay. I do have one observation on the bidding here. Which is that West has a, a perfectly reasonable, sorry, East has a perfectly reasonable one spade opening, but they are absolutely minimum, semi-balanced, with only three controls. So, I think if I was sat in the East seat, where Douglas is, personally, I would be bidding four spades over four diamonds, because initially, I'm actually not interested in a slam bearing in mind that West may only have 
Ah, right. Sorry, yeah, it's showing a heart shortage. But which which actually makes your hand even worse because it's, you know, your queen of hearts is now. But even so, like I said, you're absolutely minimum. I, I would, even if you give yourself the queen of diamonds instead of the queen of hearts, I would be bidding four spades initially. That's not saying absolutely I've no interest in slam. It's just saying initially I'm absolutely minimum. I don't have anything particularly that I can show. Um, bearing in mind that West might have a singleton heart rather than a void. They don't have to have a void. So initially I would bid four spades with the East hand. But now West is going to bid five clubs, which says, listen, I'm definitely seriously interested in a slam. Um, so five clubs is a cubid. Uh, and it implies that pretty much you know, it's, he's got really good side suit controls. So if he hasn't got a heart void, he's probably got quite a lot more in the minors as well as what he's got in spades. So he might have ace king queen to five spade to five diamonds or ace queen x, say in clubs. And now with five clubs, East probably would say, well, OK. If you're that serious, we'll go. And he might bid six clubs to say, well, I've got the king of clubs because he can't cube anything in diamonds or hearts. But more likely he'd just bid six spades. OK. Um, any questions? Um, not quite, Charlene. It's a mini splinter, so you need to bid two no trumps initially. You're not, you're not immediately going to show where your shortage is. You're going to basically issue the invitation with two no trumps, but asking permission to show where your shortage is if South wants to let you.
So three clubs are saying, yeah, show me where the shortage is. Three diamonds is showing a heart shortage. And Roger is delighted. Very nice. Very nice. 20 point game here. John Luke would be ecstatic. No, I'm just about to say that, actually. Um, I, I mean, yes, there's nothing wrong in Roger bidding three clubs. But uh, in practice, personally, over two no trumps, I'm bidding four spades with that south hand. Yes, theoretically, it's possible that that North will have a club shortage. But in practice, it's very unlikely, given that East West are completely silent here. If they had a an 11 or a 12 card club fit, I think one of them would have said something by now. So in practice, Roger can be fairly certain that North has a shortage in one of the red suits. And so for practical purposes, I'm going to bid four spades over two no trumps. Well, no, it's a good way of showing the mechanics of the system. And I'm grateful that he bid three clubs. Well, it's not, there's not, no, I, I wouldn't say he is. Because he's got ace to four hearts and three aces. So, I, you know, hearts is not going to play terribly well for east-west. But when you've got the spades, there's not a huge chance of, of uh, you getting preempted. And north-south can make five spades here. Easy as pie. Okay. Um, any questions here? So, nothing wrong with the system that, that, that the sequence that Roger and Charlene had. But I think I'd be bidding four spades over two no trumps. I wouldn't even bother asking. Because a shortage in either red suit I don't think it will. No. I wasn't I wasn't particularly worried about that wasn't what was concerning me about the three club, three down and four spades sequence. But it's on the basis of you know, for practical purposes the chances of North having a club shortage is tiny. So, um, you know, 99 times out of 100, North is going to have a red suit shortage. And a shortage in either red suit so it suits South because they've got the club shortage and they've got the ace of both the red suits. They've got the perfect hand. Okay, well done, guys. Um... Just bear with me a second.
I think we'll make this the last hand. Ha! Huh. Sorry. Just stop a minute, please. Sorry, Mehmet. Okay. Well done, guys. Um, I slightly chopped and changed the hands around. Didn't get it quite right the first time. Um, the critical difference here uh, is that South's three club bid is still fine. But now North's fit for clubs is not ideal. Three small is not the perfect sort of holding. Yes, you might make 10 tricks here, but you need everything to be right. You need everything to be right. Whereas before, North had the king of clubs, and you just needed everything not to be wrong. That was the subtle difference. Also, North is an absolute rock bottom minimum. Yeah, I just claim nine tricks here. Charlene. So here, North is a rock bottom minimum. They don't have an ideal fit for clubs. Um, and so they're just not interested opposite an eight to nine count because they don't have that good club fit and because they're a rock bottom minimum. So they bid three hearts and everybody passes. And yes, you might you might make ten tricks, but here the king of clubs is wrong. Um, uh, 
if you make the right guesses in clubs you'll you'll come to nine tricks but you're not going to come to ten unless ops are asleep okay anybody got any questions anybody got any questions about mini splinters splinters or fit showing jump shifts Okay, guys, so, so don't forget the practices tomorrow night and Thursday night. Really good way of cementing, cementing what I've shown you tonight in your heads. Lots of practice hands on exactly these kinds of uh, bids. Um, so a really valuable thing, and I'm really grateful to Roger and John for the practices they organize. Yeah, if you haven't already got it, go and grab AA Bridge from Roger's site. Uh, absolutely invaluable uh, tool for improving your bridge especially if you're trying to learn OCP so thanks guys I shall see you soon and good night